Hey guys, it's Jason with the Board Game Mechanics, and today we're going to take a look at a little tiny card game. I mean, minuscule, microscopic. I've done this joke before, so I'm not going to go any further. And that game is called Delt. Don't touch these cards! Delt is a little card game from Amigo that plays three to five players in 20 or 30 minutes, depending on how long you want the game to go, because there's a short version and a longer version. And what you're trying to do in this game is you are trying to make the best of a hand of cards that you were dealt. And what that means is you're going to get dealt a hand of cards. Usually what you can do is you're going to take these cards and you're going to put them in an order that you want. Not so fast, not in this game. In this one, you have to live with the order. And you're going to be playing cards that are next to each other from your hand. You're going to play a single card, either higher than the card that was before it. You're going to be playing a double card, which is a run, like a 7, 8, 8, 9, whatever. Or two sevens, two eights. Or you're going to be playing a triple, or a trip is what they call it here. Which would be, you know, 7, 8, 9, 7, 7, 7, 8, 8, 8, whatever. Three cards in a row. There's also a couple special cards that you can play that you can end up stopping a trick as like a, you know, an all-powerful trump card or a wild X card that's any number. There's also a draw three that you can get stuck with, so you gotta be careful. That's enough talking about it. I mean, I think I'm talking about it longer than the game actually takes to play. So let's just, I'll zip it. Let's go down to the table. We'll check it out. All right, so here's a game of dealt, all set up for three players. Now, Keep in mind, your hands are not going to be out like this, but I just wanted you guys to be able to see what everybody kind of had in their hand. So in a game of dealt, in a three-player game, which is what I'm showing you right here, you're going to give each player 10 cards, which I have done. Then you're going to put two cards face up in front of everybody, which is a reserve. Now, the tricky part when you're dealing, I would have got dealt these cards just like this in the pile. When I take these cards, I have to flip them over and keep them in the order that they're in. That's the gist of the game here. So we're gonna be playing our cards out of our hand and they have to be like touching each other, which will make sense in a minute. All right, and each player is also going to get two tokens in a short game, or if you wanna play a longer game, you can get three tokens. The goal of the game is to be a person that does not run out of tokens. Everybody's gonna win. The one person that runs out of tokens is gonna to lose. So that's kinda of how this works. All right, now let's talk about the game. The game's pretty straightforward. It's numbers 1 through 12, and there's four bonus cards. There's a draw card, which you can see here. There's an X, which you can see here, and there's a stop. So maybe there's only three cards. Let me look at that. Yes, the three cards. So you can see all of them, a stop, an X, and a draw. Now here's how the game works. So this player's going to go first. What they're going to do is they're going to play a card or a set of cards. They're going to play one, two, or three cards in front of you. The trick here is you can only play cards that are next to each other in your hand. There's a couple different uh, cards you can play, but so but mostly you're going to play cards that are next to each other. You can always play a single card, which say this player, that's what they're going to do. Uh, they're going to play this eight. So they're going to play this eight right there. That's their card. Now the next player either has to play a nine, a single card that's higher, two eights, which is, you know, a bigger run, or an 8-9, a 7-8, or two different cards in a run. So they're going to look at their hand and see what they have. They have, let's see, they have a 7 and an 8. So let's go ahead and do that. So they're going to play these seven, the 7 and an 8 because they're next to each other. So they're going to play there. So that's the run we're trying to beat is a 7 and an 8. So then this player is going to look over here. They have a 10, nothing. So they're going to play this special card. So when you're playing a, spe a single card, you can play it from anywhere in your hand. It doesn't matter. So they're going to play this card. Whoever wins the trick, this is going to cause them to draw three more cards. So they're going to play that there. This trick is taken. This player won it, so they have to draw three more cards. There's a draw deck off to the side, so they're going to get three cards. And you just put them in your hand on either side. It doesn't really matter. But they just have to go in order like this. If you've ever played the game Bonanza, it's kind of the same deal where you can't move. Oh, look at that. 9 and a 10, that's great. All right, so now they won the trick, so they get to play again. 
Same thing, they, they play, are gonna play a card out, either a single, a double, or a triple, you're gonna play a maximum of three cards. Now, if it comes to somebody and they can't play, that's when these cards are gonna come in. I'm gonna try to show that, I'm gonna try to play through a whole round, see what we can get to. So they're gonna play, let's go ahead and do, let's do this. So we're gonna do these four cards, which will be a seven, eight, oh, can't do all that. Shoot, 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 shoot. So we won't play this one. Sorry, I miscounted. Put that back where it came from. So we're gonna play seven, eight, nine, like that. I put them in a different order, that's fine, because they came from all in one section of my hand, which is fine. So that's this player. So I need to either play an eight, nine, 10, or a seven, eight, nine, 10, or six, seven, eight, nine, which I can't play. So since I can't play a higher run, I have to pick up one of these cards and put it in my hand. When I do that, I can put it anywhere in my hand that I want to. So I'm gonna take this 10 right here and I'm gonna tuck it right there. So now I have two 10s next to each other. And then it's that player's turn and they're going to, they can't do anything special either. So they're gonna head and go, they're gonna play this. So they're gonna play a stop. Stop is gonna win the trick. It's basically, the highest card in the game, and it's gonna give them the lead. So that's what they're doing. So they're trumping it with the stop. Now they're gonna get the lead. So they're gonna look at their cards and they're gonna play. Let's see, let's just do this. They're gonna do this 9-10 because now they have two fours next to each other, which is really good. So they're gonna play 9-10, the X is a nine. This player is gonna play, ooh, they can't do that. They're actually gonna pick up the 11, and they'll put it right here, so then they can play all those together. And then I need 11 or a 12, a 9, 10. I could do, I'll pick this 12 up, put that in my hand. All right, and then they win that trick, so they get to go again. They're just gonna play a one. They're gonna be nice and they're just gonna play this one. This player is gonna do nine, 10, 11, because they're all next to each other so they can play them. So nine, 10, 11 is the, the one we have to beat. All right, so it comes to this player's turn. I looked at the book, the rule book, and in order to stay in this round, I don't have any reserve cards. I'd have to have numbers higher than this. So I only have two 12s, two 10s, one, two, yeah, I can't. So I'm actually out of the round. So this player would get rid of all their cards because they're out and they would lose a chip. And then we would just start over. Um, so this player has two chips, that player has two chips, this player has one. So then we would take the, all these cards back and we would shuffle. Normally it's the person who has the last player left with cards has to get rid of a chip, but in this case, that player did so poorly with managing their cards that they got rid of a chip, and that may means the round is over. So then you would do it again, you would shuffle all the cards, deal 10 outs to each player, two face up, and then you're gonna play again. You're gonna keep doing that until someone was out of chips. So say this player was out of chips, and if they lost again and they couldn't put in a chip, game's over, they lose. And then these two players would be the winner. That's how you play dealt. Let's go up the top. See what they think about it. All right, well, that was dealt. Uh, I gotta say, um, when I first played this game, two things. One, it kind of reminded me of No Thanks with the whole chip piece. It's not like No Thanks at all, but that's the vibe I got from the chips. Two, it has a lot of Bonanza in it. So in Bonanza, if you've never played Bonanza, it's an Uwe Rosenberg game, and you're gonna be having these hands of bean cards. The way the cards are dealt to you is the order they have to stay in your hand. But the difference between that one and this one is you always have to pull the cards that are farthest this way in your hand. So if I'm holding my hand here, and I always have to play this card next. So I'm trying to figure out ways to make trades to get these cards over to here. In this one, it doesn't matter if it's in the front, middle, or back of your hand. You just need to play cards that are next to each other. A single card is fine, you can play it from anywhere. But if I wanted to play three cards, I gotta make sure there's like some kind of run next to each other in my hand. Now, I showed it in the overview when I did a run of three. They weren't in the right order. Like I think I had a nine, seven, eight or something like that. It doesn't say in the rule book if that's allowed. So I'm not 100% sure if you're allowed to do 
pull the cards out of your hand as long as they can make a run and then rearrange them on the table. It seems to be that that's the only way that would make this game even physically possible. So in order to get a triplet, I think that would have to be the only way that this is possible other than like using an X card. But there's only two of those. So if that's not the actual rule, I'll put a clarification in the video. But from everything I've read and the way that the game plays, it seems to be that as long as the cards are touching each other, the order's not important. If you can pull them out of your hand, you can rearrange them when you play them on the table. So I think that's the rule and I'm gonna stick with it unless otherwise noted, like I previously said. So now, now that I've talked about what this game is like and kind of what it compares to, I'm gonna tell you what I think about this. So this is just a little card game. I don't even know how many cards it has. It looks like just a normal deck of cards. Like here's the whole stack of cards. There's probably 50 or so here. Um, it's not that big. It feels about the same thickness as a regular deck of cards. So we'll say 52 to 60 cards. And you're just playing cards, trying to take tricks. It's a trick taking game, but whoever takes the trick is not important. Other than the fact that you get a lead the next trick. So say I took that trick and I took a trick with a high 10 because we all just played single cards because we didn't have anything. Then on my next lead, say because I played that 10, now I have three cards next to each other, I could dump those three cards out. But the tricky thing there is if I lead with a, a trip and someone has that draw three card, they'd be like, well, I'm just gonna dump this because I can't have a triplet. So they'll dump that down. I'll take the trick, I'll take the three cards. And now I have more cards in my hand. So while I got rid of three, I drew three right back. And that person who had, got played one is now at less cards than me. So it seems simple on the surface, but when you really get down to it, those stop cards and the draw cards really change the strategy up a little bit in this. So it goes from just a simple little game to, wait a minute, if I play this triplet now, you're gonna slam me with a bunch of cards. And I don't think that's okay. So I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna play a single card and I'm gonna make you wait for it. We're gonna do a slow play. We're gonna slow play it. So all that being said, I'm gonna go ahead and give this a BGM accepted seal because I really liked it. Katie did not, Katie did not like it. But my buddy that I played it with, Brandon, he enjoyed it. So, I mean, again, just because I like a game doesn't mean everybody has to like it. So this is a BGM accepted. I'm gonna give this seven out of 10 on BGG, which is a three and a half out of five on our arbitrary rich scale. That means absolutely nothing, but we like to give it the games that we enjoy because playing games and enjoying games is what this channel is all about. So I'm not gonna belabor the point anymore. This is fun. If you like little card games, you like trick-taking games, you like Bonanza, you like card games that have a little different flavor to them that you can still bang out like while you're waiting on your food at a restaurant or something, then check this out. It's good. Um, the little box, this box could fit in your pocket. Um, maybe if you have big pockets. Either way, you can put it in a purse or a backpack or something. Not a big deal. So if, if this seems interesting to you, definitely go check it out. I would highly recommend it. It's available on Amazon. Um, I don't know where else you can get it, but I know this came from Amazon. So yeah, you won't be disappointed if this looks cool to you. Go check it out. So I'm Jason with the Board Game Mechanics, and as always, keep gaming. Yeah.